Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I discovered my soon-to-be ex-wife cheating about seven months ago. I went through all the heartache, the denial, the pain, the attempts to make her choose me. I was seriously depressed for a long time. I never confronted her, but I was a total mess. She must have known I knew. She just didn't care, I guess, or at least I assume that. About two to three months ago, I was just done with it all. Done with her, done with the marriage, I just didn't care anymore. I completely checked out of the relationship and started preparing for divorce and my new life to come. I avoided my wife as much as possible, tried to stay out of the house when she was home. I would not engage in conversation, when she asked me a question, I would only answer yes, no, maybe, or I don't know. I even left the divorce lawyer's bills out in the open. She must have known I was checked out and preparing for divorce. Even the kids asked me about it, they could see what was going on. I even gave them the we both love you speech, it's not your fault, sometimes grown-ups can't be together anymore, etc. My wife was actually in the room and must have heard me talking to the kids. She didn't comment or object, and I took her silence as consent. Anyway, a few days ago, I met a girl I used to know in school, before I ever met my wife. We always had this tension between us, some kind of chemistry. We would always flirt and be touchy, but we never actually did anything about it. Let's call her Monica, because I think she looks like Monica Bellucci. Monica and her family moved away before I found the courage to actually do anything about it, and I regretted that for a long time. But I was young, shy, and a bit foolish. I hadn't thought about Monica for a long time, honestly. I hadn't seen her in years. But as soon as we met, the tension between us was palpable, more than I even remembered, and our communication was effortless. She actually asked me out. I explained the situation with my soon-to-be ex-wife, STBXW. I told her I wanted to be officially separated before I started dating. I wasn't going to cheat, and Monica respected that. She gave me her number and told me to give her a call as soon as I was done handling things. She told me she had never married and was really excited to get to know me again. I was even more excited. The encounter motivated me to finally confront my wife and officially get the separation and divorce underway. I was really happy when I went home and sat down, waiting for my wife. I was actually grinning like a lunatic when I asked her to sit down and told her we needed to talk. I told her I had known about her cheating for a long time. I assumed that she knew I knew, especially since I'd checked out of our relationship for the last three months. She didn't seem to mind that I no longer cared. So, I told her I wanted to start dating and move on with my life. I concluded my speech with, all things considered, it's time for us to get divorced, don't you agree? Her reaction was totally unexpected. She started crying, not just regular crying, but a desperate, soul-breaking noise. I'd never heard anything like it. She was blabbering excuses, asking for second chances, saying the affair didn't mean anything that we could fix this if we tried counselling, etc. I was a bit shocked, I thought she'd be happy. I told her she could go and be with this guy without guilt. He was obviously more important to her than her family, wasn't he? If he wasn't, then why go with him in the first place? She must have known this would destroy us. She can't possibly be that clueless, can she? I told her if she truly believed we needed to fix our family or our marriage, the time to do that would have been seven months ago, before she had the affair. Now it's too late, it's broken beyond repair. I didn't think we had any problems in our marriage. She didn't talk to me, and I'm not a mind reader, so whatever it was, I had no way of fixing it. Since she started this affair with the other guy, she obviously thought something was wrong or missing, something so wrong that it couldn't be solved by talking to me. Something had to be so lacking or so wrong that she was okay with having our children grow up in a broken home from here on out. If not, why do it? 
I clearly and calmly explained that there's no way for her to undo being with this guy for the last seven months, and there's no way to undo the pain and suffering she caused me. The pain she caused brought me to this point of basically being indifferent. Or, actually, I kind of hate her guts. I'm simply being civil for the sake of co-parenting our children in the future. I told her I didn't believe she ever cared about me. No person who cared even a little for someone else would put them through this kind of pain. They wouldn't betray them in such a way as she has done. Her telling me that she loves me has no meaning or credibility because her actions conclusively prove otherwise. She became completely incoherent at this point, I couldn't make heads or tails of anything she was saying. It was just a jumbled mess. In the end, I had to call her sister, because honestly, I wasn't going to take care of her. Her sister showed up, and after I explained what was going on, she took her away. I felt tremendous relief when they were gone, like I could finally breathe for the first time in seven months. I don't know what I'm looking for here. She must have known this was going to happen. She must have wanted it. She can't possibly be so clueless that she thinks this behavior and these choices she made would result in anything other than divorce and a broken family. She's beautiful, she's smart, and our marriage was great up until she started her affair. I've accepted that life changes, and I've moved past it. Now she's pretending like she loves me. That she wants us to remain married and a family? What could possibly be her motivation to create this major drama at this point? What could she gain? I mean, she couldn't possibly expect us to try to reconcile at this point, could she? It must be some kind of ploy. I just can't figure out what it is. I have lots of evidence of her cheating, and I live in a European country, which would mean no alimony or anything for her. Could that be it? Is she afraid I'll expose her? Could that be it? She wants me to feel sympathy so I don't tell people about what she did? Her affair partner is married, so maybe she's scared I'll tell his wife. I just can't wrap my head around it. Anyway, I just had to get this out of my head. I was hoping it would make more sense typed out, but no, I'm just as confused now as when I started this rant. Update. I put up a bunch of papers on the wall, each with a headline to organize my thoughts. Our kids, how to behave when meeting my wife, my marriage, Monica, questions to ask my wife, etc. The final document is too big to retype here, so I'll just cover some of the main points. My goal was to figure out the core principles I want in place and the most important things to focus on. I went through each one, evaluating whether I could achieve anything meaningful with it and what a meaningful result would even look like if I did. As for the kids, they are my number one priority. I'm increasing my efforts to help them cope with all of this. I'll arrange more individual counselling, family counselling, and quality time together. We'll go on trips and make new memories. I also plan to involve the rest of my family to surround them with love and support through this. I'll speak with their teachers, coaches, and other important people in their lives to make sure they have a solid support system everywhere. I also got an STI test, and I've scheduled a DNA test for the kids. Just the thought that they might not be mine makes me very uncomfortable, but I need to know for their sake. If they're not mine, there may be medical history they should know. Or, what if they want to reach out to their biological father when they're older? How will they see me if I don't act now to find out? I just hope they're mine, but I'll be stressed until I get confirmation one way or the other. After meeting with their therapists alone, they joined us, and we carefully explained everything, allowing them to ask as many questions as they wanted. I repeatedly assured them that they could come to me with anything. I am their dad, I love them more than anything, and I will always, always be there for them, whatever they need, no matter what. Regarding my marriage, I've come to the conclusion that I can never trust my wife again. Without trust, it's impossible to have a relationship. I also realize that I don't love my wife anymore, I don't love the person she has become. My love for her was once a huge part of me, but she killed that with the affair. It completely changed my perception of her. Maybe, in time, I could learn to love her again, but honestly, I don't want to. It's better to end it and move on with our lives. 
I no longer want this marriage, I don't want our relationship, and I don't want her. The part of me that loved her, that used to feel endless joy and happiness when thinking about her, now fills me with dread and painful memories. Any thought of association with her causes me serious discomfort at the moment. Divorce is inevitable, and I want to get it done as soon as possible. As for Monica, I've talked a lot with her. I had concerns based on the feedback I received here on Reddit, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to jump into a new relationship. I also didn't want to drag her into my mess. Let's face it, my life is a total mess right now. She disagreed. She said life is messy, so we might as well see how we deal with it together while dating. I learned why she never married, she was actually engaged, but her fiancé died unexpectedly in a work accident almost five years ago. This devastated her, and even though she had gone on a few dates since, she hadn't been able to form a connection with anyone. From her perspective, life is short, and you have to take risks whenever a true opportunity presents itself. I explained how I don't want to start anything until after the divorce is official. I don't want to cheat while I'm technically still married. She agreed and respected that. We also discussed how it might be perceived if we suddenly became a couple in public, it would be easy for others to frame her as the homewrecker. I don't want that, and she agreed that we should wait a bit after everything is official before doing anything. I feel incredibly drawn to Monica. This phone call feels like a borderline emotional affair, so I won't contact her again until I've completed the legal separation. We agreed that I would get my affairs in order and contact her when I was ready, and then we would see where things go from there. When it came to planning the meeting with my wife, I wrote down some principles about who I wanted to be. I made a commitment to myself to embody the man I used to be before all this chaos unfolded. I decided I needed to stay calm. I would make every effort not to be cruel and would keep in mind that the purpose of this conversation was to move on with our lives. The goal was to co-parent as effectively as possible for our kids. Still, I prepared a list of questions to better understand her thinking behind the affair and what she envisioned for our future. I wasn't going to be deceitful, I wouldn't give her false hope of reconciliation just to secure a post-nup or some benefit in the divorce. I aimed to act as fairly as possible, I would divide all assets equally, and we would have 50 50 custody. Even though she had treated me terribly, I refused to let her actions dictate my character. I would act in a way that I could stand by today, tomorrow, and 20 years from now. I hate her for what she did to me, for what she did to us, and to our children. But I also cherish the good memories we shared during happier times. I love the children we created and raised together. Moving forward, I would strive to remember her in that light, not as the person who cheated. I can't carry hate in my heart, so at some point, I need to forgive her in order to move on. Up until the point she cheated, I believed we had a solid marriage. We made love every day, spent quality time together, and rarely argued. We sacrificed for each other willingly. I was open with her about my feelings until I discovered her infidelity, I had believed she was open with me as well, but her actions now suggest otherwise. When Saturday arrived, I went to see her. Her sister had warned me that she was not in good shape. She was right. My soon-to-be ex-wife looked absolutely horrible, bloodshot eyes, a swollen face, and unkempt hair. She appeared to have shrunk, like she had imploded into herself. I doubted she had slept or eaten much that week. When we all sat down, my wife was shaking almost uncontrollably. Surprisingly, I felt calm. I empathized with her pain, but not as a loving spouse. It felt more like the concern I'd feel for an actor in a movie I was watching. I couldn't fully explain it, but it confirmed my suspicion I probably don't love her anymore. I just sat there, allowing her the space to collect herself enough to speak. She started several times, but broke down crying each time. Watching her, it was clear this wasn't an act. I had seen her cry before, but never like this. I guess people can fake tears, but I doubt anyone can feign the look of someone who has cried non-stop for a week, mixed with soul-wrenching sobs and giants not bubbles. When she finally began to speak, it was like a dam had burst. She apologized every other word. 
Surprisingly, she didn't try to excuse her behavior or shift the blame onto me. Her sister also cried and would intermittently berate her. It became clear that her sister had warned her this would happen, sharing her own painful experience of losing her fiancé a year ago, something I had never known. Her sister's cheating triggered something in my wife, a midlife crisis of sorts, making her contemplate infidelity more than she ever had before. In the end, it became clear that she had acted on an infatuation, a crush on the guy she cheated with, believing she couldn't help herself. She never thought I would find out or that anyone would get hurt. It was a completely selfish act, she claimed to be very happy in our marriage. In her mind, she convinced herself that she deserved this fling, and that I would probably support her choice if I knew how happy she was at the time. She thought this affair would pass, and we would all return to our happy family lives. She had no idea I had discovered the truth, and it was only when I started to check out emotionally that she began to question what was happening. I learned she had broken up with the affair partner about a month and a half ago, as the initial thrill had begun to fade. She even handed me her phone to check, revealing she had blocked him. When I unblocked him, messages from a month and a half ago began pouring in. She had been attempting to reconnect with me in our marriage, but I hadn't shown any interest in being close to her. Until I sat her down, she believed we could find a way back together, convinced that we would end up stronger than ever. When she looked into my eyes as I confronted her, the reality hit her like a ton of bricks. She realized this was likely the end of the line. I asked her several questions, primarily about what gave her the right to do this to us, to our children. Ultimately, it was pure selfishness on her part. Like many have pointed out, I realized I would probably never get the answers I was searching for because they don't exist. There is no acceptable reason for cheating, which means I would never receive an acceptable explanation. However, I did achieve a form of closure. I expressed to her the incredible pain she had caused me and made her acknowledge that it was her fault our marriage was broken and that our children would grow up in a broken home. This acknowledgement brought me a strange sense of peace. She had been reading everything she could find about fixing a marriage after infidelity. She prepared a complete timeline and detailed confession, signed and everything, ready for me. I didn't read it, I simply handed it over to my lawyer. She begged for a second chance, insisting she would do anything to make it right. I told her I didn't believe her. In fact, I didn't trust anything she said anymore. When she asked me what she could do to fix it, I reminded her that she was the one who broke it. If she didn't know how to fix it, how could she expect me to provide a solution? I posed the question, if she were in my shoes, what would she say or do? After some back and forth, she ultimately conceded that if the roles were reversed, she probably wouldn't forgive me either. I told her I had gotten an STI test and planned to get DNA tests for the kids. She completely broke down for about 20 minutes upon hearing this. She insisted that this was the only time she had ever cheated or done anything out of line. After more discussion, she finally acknowledged that I had no reason to believe her and admitted that if she were in my position, she would likely do the same. I asked her if the affair partner's wife knew about the infidelity. She didn't know. However, she conceded that the wife deserved to know. I asked her whether she should be the one to tell her or if I should. She inquired if I would consider reconciling or marriage counselling if she told the wife. I said no, but I added that it would help her regain a tiny bit of respect in my eyes. She promised to tell the affair partner's wife and everyone else involved, and she stated that she would go to HR to confess everything. Again, I expressed my disbelief in her promises. She swore she would never be with anyone else and that she would never give up on trying to get back with me, even if it took the rest of her life. I didn't believe her, but I kept my thoughts to myself, it felt redundant at this point. In an attempt to keep me, she offered a one-sided open marriage, complete access to all her communications and 24-7 availability. I told her I had talked to Monica and was waiting because I didn't want to cheat. I wasn't interested in an open relationship, I knew it would hurt her if we went down that road, and I didn't want to hurt others like she had hurt me. I also didn't want to be her jailer. Constantly snooping on her and being suspicious wasn't a foundation for a healthy relationship. 
Intimacy without a deeper connection held no value for me, if I needed a mechanical release, I could handle that on my own. I didn't need a partner for that. At this point, we were both exhausted. We had been going at it for over five hours, and my wife had been crying the entire time, ranging from bad to absolutely horrifying. We weren't going to make any more progress, it was done. I told her clearly that the love I once had for her had died. I didn't recognize the person she had become. Our family had died by her hand, and I was going through with the divorce. I explained that she couldn't undo what she had done. The only way to avoid this outcome would have been to not start the affair seven months ago. I didn't want our marriage back, I didn't want her back. I didn't want more pain. I suggested we go no contact for a while to gain some distance and perspective. I told her I had already filed for divorce and that my mind was made up. We could start family therapy to co-parent, but beyond that, I didn't want to see her. Telling her this was incredibly painful. She was crying hard, mumbling no, 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 please, no. When I got up to leave, she suddenly had a massive, almost explosive nosebleed. She reached for me, but then she passed out. I managed to catch her before she hit the floor and drove her and her sister to the ER, staying until I learned she would be okay. Last night and today, my soon-to-be ex-wife has been telling everyone what she did. The affair partner's wife called me this morning to confirm what my wife had told her. I sent her copies of some of the evidence I had gathered. I just learned that she kicked her husband out. She wants to meet and review more of the evidence, she's been suspecting something for a long time but hadn't had any solid proof. I suggested we sit down for dinner tomorrow, but she wanted to talk on the phone. I told her maybe later, I wasn't sure I could handle that right now. I freely admit that I'm feeling like a piece of sure asterisk T. I haven't been able to sleep. Cracks are forming in my resolve. I know I must stay strong, but it's incredibly hard. Why do I feel so guilty? Why do I feel responsible for trying to fix this? We might be able to fool ourselves for a while, but it's likely not going to work long term. Some of her friends and relatives have been calling me, cursing me out, insisting I should give her a second chance. But in my mind, I think, why drag out the pain? It's better to get it over with so we can start to heal and build new lives. So that's it, nothing spectacular. No revenge, no resolve, no peace. No happy ending, just more pain for all of us. My mind is in a very dark place right now. I don't know what to do, to be honest. Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.